Hello, this is Sart or Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech and doing a deck tech here today with a guest, Kyle Nash. He's got a Duretti deck that is very competitive. Kyle, can you tell us a little bit about this deck? Certainly, Brian. This was built originally off of the uh, Duretti Precon, so the Mono Red uh, Commander 2014 Precon, I think it was 2014. I actually I sat down at a table uh, with couple friends with just the pre-con in hand and it actually beat everyone at the table uh, their their monster gave decks whatever have you uh sat down there and boom i won right out of the pre-con i said wow this is a power level that i can get i can get a hold of uh and i made quite a few changes to the deck uh, just going forward and i made it a very combo heavy deck so the idea around it is to assemble the infinite mana combos that are very prevalent here as quickly as possible by looting through the deck, uh, just drawing extra cards, uh, manipulating the top of the deck, what have you, uh, and just trying to get things down. Uh, I, 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 I tend to overuse the term glass cannon, but I think that's a little bit about what this is. Uh, despite its nature of recursion, uh, there is less recursion here than what you might think would be in your average Duretti deck. So how does this deck usually end up winning there's a lot of ways to win with infinite mana uh my 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 favorite is staff of domination if you have infinite mana and staff of domination you pick up your deck uh put it in your hands and and win the game if you can't win after drawing your entire deck i don't, I don't know uh how, how you win after that point additionally i have a scumbag uh nevin rolls disc lock in here uh with michael synth lattice and dark steel forge um I don't like to pull that one out because I get all the I get all the dirty looks at the table when that happens. But uh, I call it it's a it's a pseudo infinite uh, infinite turn combo is what it is essentially. So if uh, if you guys are going to want to be salty and sit there and let you destroy all their stuff every single turn, I mean go for it and uh, you'll just draw a card every turn and, and eventually win. Um, additionally, a couple of the one of the best cards that came in the preconstructed deck is Scrap Mastery. I love this card. Uh, you feel, by the nature of the deck, you fill your graveyard with artifacts. And uh, if you have a way to take out everything that you have on board and put it into the graveyard, uh, with like a Archbound Ravager or a Cart Clan Ironworks or something like that, you throw the Scrap Mastery down and it's instant win. I mean, it, there's there's so much card advantage, there's so much uh, table advantage to that that uh, you're just gonna end up you're just gonna end up winning there. A couple big guys in here. I have. Um, Steel Hellkite, I love to dump infinite mana into that and just uh, swing swing one, swing two, swing three, and win the game. Or it, it's, it's great as a secondary card because you can take and start whittling away at people's boards just for value and as a win con. Hellkite Tyrant is fun. Uh, this is that uh, big dragon that lets you win the game if you have 20 or more artifacts. Hellkite Tyrant lets you win the game. Um, I've, I've only ever won with it once. Nobody likes to see that sit around. It's got to sit around on the table. Uh, I mean, if you could flash it in at the end of your turn, that'd be one thing, but um, it's not a lot of space in that. It's just kind of sitting there. Uh, it's just silliness, right? Um, <laughs> definitely silliness. Uh, Hellkite Igniter is another one to dump infinite mana into. Tra uh, flying Haste and Fire Breathing. Uh, that gives Fire Breathing plus X plus O till um, where X is the number of artifacts you control. Love this thing. Uh, definitely, if I have it in hand, I try to try to assemble my stuff as quickly as I can and get it out there and start swinging big. Uh, those are really the main win cons right there, though, Brian. How fast does this deck ramp up? Okay, it it, it can ramp really hard, really fast. I can empty I can empty a hand on turn two or three if. Uh, if things are going really well, if I've crafted it, you know, if, if I could craft a hand at the beginning of the game, which is hard to do, um, you can you can put down this combo on turn four. Certainly, you can get Duretti on on board and start looting with him on turn two if you're lucky, and turn three pretty consistently. Absolutely, it gets up there. It gets up there quick. It lets you cast your mirror battle spheres and your pentafights and, and things like that uh, rather quickly. Turn five, turn six. So what are some of the more interesting kind of hidden tech cards or cards in here that people might underestimate? Icor Wellspring. 
fun, fun card printed as a common, I think in uh, Mirrodin, I think it was. When it enters the battlefield or leaves the battlefield, draw a card. So great. Yep. Absolutely. It is it's absolutely perfect. Um, a little bit of hidden tech here. People people went to Conspiracy and see these draft cards and, and ignore them after they draft Conspiracy, but uh, I have a card in here called Deal Broker. It's, it's just good looting. It's, uh, it's a three artifact creature. Uh, it's a two, three. Four, excuse me, so two three for three, and uh, it has a bunch of a bunch of draft words on it, and then it has tap, it has tap, draw a card, then discard a card. Love this thing. Cost pennies. Um, and then you then you have a bunch of the win cons themselves, uh, mere battle sphere, uh, and pentavite or, or pentavis, I think, uh, and you can pick those up for less than a buck. Super great value uh, coming out of those. I'm, I'm not sure where goblin welder is right now, but that's. I can't. I don't. I don't suspect that's more than five dollars. Trash for treasure is pretty cheap as well, and that's just a bunch of recursion. Uh, Scarecrow, one of the uh, one of the better scarecrows, I guess, is is not more than not more than six or seven dollars, if that. I think I'm. I think I'm overshooting that one a lot. So, what did you really do to strongly customize this deck? What's the interesting packages that you added to it? A couple of the couple of the over the top things is I put a stacks package in here. Total stacks uh, package. I have I have the whole hate me bit. Uh, Winter orb, tangle wire, stranglehold, defense grid, lodestone golem, and smoke stack to slow everything down. I have uh, I also have uh, crucible of worlds in here for getting the dark steel citadels out of the, you know out of the graveyard when you need them. Uh, Karn liberated for control. So Karn's a little too expensive for my taste these days, but uh, definitely good to go. And then uh, in, in, it, it's not it's not hard to put together a deck uh, if you have all the money in the world, but I guarantee you don't need it. Uh, what I what I like to invest in when it comes to these commander decks after you get a good working bit, foils, foils, and um, if you if you got some extra scratch, throw it at uh, throw it at an altar, uh, an artist that can alter your cards and. Uh, so what are some of your favorite altars that are in here? I know that your wife does some incredible altars. Could we take a look at some of those? The Mana Vault is done by my wife, actually. She's, a, she's an artist herself. She, she, runs a, she runs her altar business, Main Phase Altars. Uh, and she, I, got a bu I got a bunch of them in here. I got a bunch of them in my other decks. Uh, that and I also frequently go to Kevin LePage, so I think, uh, someone I think you know, Brian. I've got to strongly agree with you there. Kevin is just amazing. So what advice do you have to new players who want to try a deck like this? Don't be afraid to lose. If if you can't win on turn five or six, uh, no one's gonna let no one's gonna let Doretti sit on the table. Uh, don't be afraid to recast. I would call it a proverbial. I would call it the like the glass cannon deck. But you're disrupted too hard on this. I mean, it's mono red. What are you gonna do? It's it's basically artifacts that splash. If you don't have a way to deal with that, oh well. You're gonna just scoop up and, and, and wait for the next game. It'll be fine. <laughs> It'll be fine. Um, also, the deck does have its own. It, it does have its weaknesses here. It is mono red and artifacts, so it's kind of hard to find decent, uh, efficiently costed board wipes and spot removal here. Uh, the only really great ones that we have kind of break the color wheel itself. So we got chaos warp. Uh, it break. I mean, it breaks the color wheel. Let's just be honest. Uh, but you have really, in, really intensive stuff like Spine of Isha that that works in the deck, but is also mana intensive. Uh, we got Oblivion Stone, Decree of Annihilation, just things like that that are kind of kind of expensive. I see that you've got Gamble in here. What do you really gamble for in this deck? Okay, so Gamble. If I have Gamble in my opening hand, um, gosh, I think of Gamble as like a, a card that says, "Go find a card and put it in your graveyard." Essentially, <laughs> it never works out for me. I'll tell you that much. Uh, depending on the turn, uh, if it's still a uh, very early game, I want to pull out uh, like a Mox Diamond. I want to pull out some some really efficiently costed cards. Or if I already have the mana set up, a combo piece all day. Um, Kadoltha Forge Master is the best tutor in the deck because it synergi it synergizes so well with things like, gosh, if, uh, Voltaic Key, Kurkesh. Uh, Rings of Bright Hearth. It, it, you can you can pull out on one turn. Probably if you're lucky, you can pull out five artifacts. And if you can pull out five artifacts out of this deck and put them onto the battlefield directly, you win the game. Uh, what do you go for with Expedition Map? Typically, I'm gonna grab Ancient Tomb with that. 
I think the uh, I think Ancient Tomb is uh, one of the best ramp cards in in the game of Magic the Gathering. I have the uh, Strip Mine Staple Reliquary Tower. You mentioned uh, Homeward Path here, which is perfect in this deck. Any last notes or piece of tech you'd like to cover before we wrap this up, Kyle? Yeah, I, I did have one thing, and it's it's not very well known uh, to a lot of people that I've, I've played Magic with so far. I play with Snow-Covered Mountains. Um, I think this is an interesting time to bring up one of the in, more interesting Magic the Gathering rulings out there. Well, I run, I run Snow-Covered Mountains uh, because I run a card in here called Extra Planar Lens. I put the extra planar lens down, and I imprint a snow-covered mountain. People to the left and right of me have their have their mountains on the table, their basic mountains uh, named mountain, and they say, "Oh, cool! I get to tap. I get to tap for uh, I get to tap for mana too." And I say, "Well, hold on a second. Extra planar lens says it must be named snow-covered mountain, and I have a bunch of snow-covered mountains in here, certainly, but you don't. And uh, boom, there you go. Sorry about that." Ouch. That's definitely one of those examples of why this is a competitive deck. It is a wonderful deck. Thank you so much, Kyle, for taking the time to share this deck tech with me. I greatly appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Brian. If you're interested in more EDH deck techs or EDH lists or anything dealing with Commander, please subscribe to the channel. Also, thank you to everybody who's over there on Patreon making this channel possible. Until next time, choose your cards wisely.